Good morning. Ooh, that echoed. Welcome in the name of Christ to our worship service. It is wonderful to uh, be with you this day. And uh, it's just, it's always nice to, to see a yard full of folks and as we come to worship. And I do want to uh, uh, welcome all those who may be um, out and about and, and are watching online at this very moment in the live stream. And I, I was just, uh, I was just uh, told that uh, we have individuals that are, are watching from Ohio this morning. So a warm hello to all those in, in Ohio and uh, to every, everywhere that we, you may be this morning. It's great to be in worship with you. As we come together this morning, a, a couple of items that I want to, uh, to lift up in the form of announcements. Um, tomorrow evening, uh, our Lay Leadership Nominations Committee meeting here in the pavilion at 7 o'clock in preparation for our church conference taking place on the 16th of September at 7 o'clock. So we're grateful for those who are, are willing to help out in that, in that committee and um, as we look for good leadership for the year to come. Um, do want to share also that the blood drive is being held on the 27th from 1 to 7. And um, if you are inclined to be a part of that, reservations are most welcome. Uh, I do believe walk-ups are also welcome. Um, I do want to just touch base on a couple of things in these coming weeks. We are just blessed with a beautiful morning this morning, and oh, it's just so nice. It's nice, cool temps, a light breeze, and yet the warm sun. Uh, we are making preparations. We are we're working on getting wires run, so we have good signal in the Family Life Center, so that in the event of uh, poor weather, we can go and, and still have worship. We'll bring your, your chairs right into there, and, and uh, we can spread out nicely and have good ventilation and and be, in a, and, and be out of the nasty weather if that would, would happen. Um, I do want to share that on the 6th of September, we are going to change our time of worship from 10 a.m. to 1045, okay? The weather's good, we'll still be outside, but the time on the 6th is at 1045. And uh, I, I do want to make mention that uh, I understand last week in my opening comments, I made mention about uh, masks and humming and singing and things like this. Uh, I do want to apologize for anyone who I may have hurt. Uh, that was not intended to be in any way a comment to, uh, uh, that was disparaging or anything like that. It's the last thing I want to do, uh, but I just wanted to lift that up as well. I want to also offer a wonderful mission opportunity. I'm so grateful for Ginger and the wonderful part that she has in terms of outreach ministries. In the entrance of the church, you see in your bulletins uh, an insert that shows a multitude of ministry opportunities. Things are a little different right now as we're navigating through this, this uncommon time for us. So in the midst of that, we have been given an opportunity to still carry out outreach missions. And this is a great opportunity for us. There are a whole series of different packets that cover different ministries that you can take home with you work on and then return completed and then they will be delivered to the various ministry settings that uh, they represent. There are uh, opportunities if you take one you're asked just to sign your name so we know all who have the packets. Take one, sign your name, take those packets home and enjoy doing some ministry as a church and then bring them back and we'll be sure that they get delivered. So that is uh, that's a, an exciting ministry that I wanted to lift up to you today. I think those are all the announcements that I have, if I'm not mistaken. Would we have any other announcements that uh, we want to be lifting up here? Committee. Yes. Building committee meeting Thursday. Thursday. Building committee meeting Thursday at 7. Thank you very much. Building committee meeting Thursday at 7. Um, there's there's a, a whole lot of new things that we're looking and to work on at the uh, Family Life Center to make it uh, that much more... Uh, ready for ministry and so it's just exciting it's exciting all the stuff that we we're going to be having going with that okay any others all right well if not i would uh invite you to uh stand as we turn to our songs of praise starting with turn your eyes upon jesus we sing that two times through it's in your uh in your handout or insert rather so let's stand, stretch our legs, and enjoy singing Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
as the deer. Thank you, and may we uh, now continue as we turn to our call to worship in the bulletin. Please uh, read responsibly. Our faith draws us together this day. Let us trust enough to open our ears and hearts. We have heard of God's miracles in other times. Our ancestors have kept the story alive for us. Give ear, all people, to God's word for today. Taste the bounty of God's blessings here and now. We long for a faith that makes sense today. We want to keep the story alive for new generations. God's revelation is for all people near and far. God is waiting to communicate with you and me. May God have mercy on us and all people. Surely God's will shall be made known to us. May we sing the Gloria Patri. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, as we gather here on this most beautiful morning, we're so grateful for the refreshing breeze. We're so grateful for your creation. We pray that as we come here and as we gather, whether it be in this very place or among the various places that we gather online to worship, that we might recognize our oneness in you. And so fill us with a wonderful sense of your abiding presence that sees us through all of life. Fill us with a sense of hope and life. Give us spirit. Give us a sense of security and assurance in knowing that you surround us in ways that sometimes we're not even aware and yet give us life. 
And it is that life that we are thankful for this morning and for your loving and abiding presence with us. May our worship be pleasing to you. All this we ask in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now let us transition to when morning gilds the skies. Wonderful. And as we turn now to uh, what we're calling a good morning greeting, you know, one of the things that I, I think sometimes we feel is all that we're trying to do to get through this, and I certainly appreciate it, is that sometimes we feel disconnected. I, I want you to take a moment to find someone and just say, how you doing? Good morning. And then have a seat. Turn around and just say good morning to a neighbor and see how they're doing. Good morning. How are you? All right. Well, it is so nice to have you here. Come on, children. We are welcoming you up, and uh, Bill will, has a neat message for you, and there's lots of space to spread out front here, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Bill, and he has something really cool for you to see. Any other kids besides Lily? Jeez. So, when, I, when I'm out driving around in my truck, I see all kinds of signs everywhere I go. Signs tell me what to do, what not to do, information signs. So I start looking at those signs and I start thinking about what they might mean to me as a Christian, besides what they mean to me as somebody that's driving. I hope you look out the windows when you're in the car. Do you look out the windows when you're in the car? Good. So one of the signs I see, it says, do not enter. The do not enter sign. That says you're not allowed to go in there. And I think about that, and Jesus tells us there's places we shouldn't go. We should not enter into bullying. We should not enter into lying. There are things, places we should not go, places we should not enter into. Another sign I see says, 
enter here. We enter there. We're supposed to enter into the gates of the kingdom. In other words, we're not supposed to go into the bad places, but we're supposed to enter into the good places. Jesus says, enter into the gates of heaven. Enter into the good places. So when you see this sign, think about entering into the good places that we're supposed to go. Another sign I see, wrong way. Now, you need to know that a long, long time ago, the Christian faith was called the way. So if you followed the Christian faith, you were going the right way. But Jesus tells us not to go the wrong way, not to follow something different, not to follow the bad kids. Sometimes the kids at school are doing bad things and they want you to go with them. No, you don't go the wrong way. Another sign I see is a sign that says, one way. Now we know that if you're going to go to heaven, there's only one way to go. You have to follow Jesus. That's the only way. There is a wrong way, but there is a, a one way to go. And you need to follow the one way. Now I think grammatically the word one way in the sign is supposed to be one word. However, because we're talking about the way that we follow Jesus, I made it two words. So as you're riding around in the car with your parents, I want you to see those signs and think about your faith and think about following Jesus and what it means to follow Jesus and how you don't want to go the wrong way. You don't want to enter into the wrong place. You always want to do the right thing. Okay? What do you say we pray? Dear God, we thank you for the signs around us, not only the road signs that we see to help us to drive, the signs that you give us in, in signs along the road in signs in nature in the signs that you give us through scripture we thank you for all of these signs that guide us through the ways we're supposed to go we ask all this in your son Jesus name Amen Bill. We take a second now to uh, turn to our joys and concerns on the back portion of our bulletins, and I have a, a number of individuals I'd like to, uh, to lift before you. Um, first of all, there was a prayer request for, for rain, and uh, we know it's been kind of dry here these recent, recent weeks, so that... Uh, that's a wonderful prayer request there. And uh, also, we, uh, for a prayer request for Kathy and Matt. Uh, Matt, uh, this about a week and a half ago, lost his mother. And or I'm sorry, just this past week or so, he lost his mom. A year and a half ago, his father passed away. And so he's going through a significant amount of grieving at this time. We want to keep him in prayer. Um, we want to keep uh, Bob R. in prayer. He was lifted up. Um, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't have a direct connection with the church, only through family, but uh, he is very ill. We want to lift him in prayer. Um, Bishop Bayshore, Bishop Bayshore, uh, as you may remember, was lifted up in prayer for leukemia. Uh, he was conducting a wedding service uh, for um, Beth Moser's uh, a niece, I think, and following the service, he ended up having a heart attack and ended up having to have six bypasses. He is home now and doing well, so we're grateful for that. There's a 15-year-old in Georgia that uh, was attacked by a dog pretty severely and is, has a lot of recovery. Ada Lee, uh, her dad is, is uh, going through the, the last stages of his life, and so we want to lift Ada Lee and her family in prayer. Uh, Tony. Tony Burke, we want to keep Tony in prayer as uh, he had surgery on his foot this past week, and hopefully that will take and do wonderful so he doesn't need any subsequent uh, skin grafts, so we, we pray for Tony. And then Randy Bubb. Randy uh, had quadruple bypass along with a valve replacement uh, this past week, and uh, he, he came through well and uh, had a, a pretty good day yesterday, and we're praying for an even better day today. So I know that Randy... Uh, and Linda both appreciate your prayers very much. 
Do we have any other joys or concerns uh, that uh, you would like to lift up at, at this time? Yes, Mindy. Uh, all the college students that are going back this week. All the college students going back to school, whatever, however that looks, uh, the craziness that we're in. Thank you very much, our college students. Do I see any others at all? All right. Well, at this time then, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you. We come here praising you for this beautiful day. We come here giving you thanks for your, your presence that is so, so steadfast when we realize that there are people hurting in this world in such extreme measures. We thank you for this opportunity to pray for them and we offer this intercessory prayer on behalf of those individuals that we've placed on uh, before us by name but also on our list and those are deep in our hearts. We do pray for healing. We pray for wellness for those who are going through surgeries or, or perhaps are recovering from surgeries. And we pray that that continues to happen in, in terms of recoveries, that they would be whole once again. And gracious God, we just come before you um, praying for the life of this church, that we just might find ourselves energized to serve you, that we might be filled with your spirit in such a way that we just can't help but but to radiate a, a countenance about us that reflects the love that, that you have for us. Fill our hearts with joy. Give us a sense of urgency to share your word and to, to be excited about the various ministries that are, are taking place and, and are planned for this, these coming weeks and months. Open our eyes to the possibilities that exist to, to, to take all that you have given us in Christ and, and to be a blessing with it. A profound blessing to those in our lives. Lord, surround us in your love at this time. Fill us with a, a sense of um, calling and help us to discern what that call is that you have placed in our lives. And so be with us now as we recognize your presence. May your spirit fill us with, again, a sense of assurance and security, a sense of uh, steadfast commitment, understanding your steadfast nature in our lives and for your love that simply has no end. For all these things, we are grateful, and it is in Christ's name that we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we continue on in the worship service, I noticed just as, I, as we were preparing for the service, the many individuals who came forward and to, to offer their offering. And, and I'm, I'm just so grateful for uh, everyone, whether it be through e-giving, mail. Yesterday when I was getting the mail, the faithfulness is just coming through. And this morning, that again. Um, we are so blessed to, to have the undergirding of, of the life of the church make sure that the ministries that are taking place will be here and are strong and are vital in, in how we go into the fall and into the winter. And, and I'm just, I praise God for that faithfulness. And, and so uh, before we have the prayer, I'm, I'm simply going to ask that the offertory might be played.
so much, Jeff. Let us rise now for the singing of the doxology. Gracious God, we come before you thanking you for this opportunity. We think of our brothers and sisters in Africa that take time out of their service to physically bring their gifts to the altar, right up the aisle with dancing and much celebration and recognition for the wonderful blessing that you are to us in so many ways throughout our lives. And we have done the same thing. Oh, it's a little different. We're a different culture. And yet at the same time, we are thanking you. We're thanking you for all that you bestow to us, how much the blessings of life that are upon us, and then the opportunity to be a blessing. And so, Lord, grant your blessings upon these tithes and offerings. Make them be for us a, a, a wonderful opportunity to serve you and to share and glorify you in this community and to be the church worldwide. We welcome you now and we thank you, asking your blessings in Christ's holy name. Amen. May we now continue in our worship as we sing together our next uh, hymn, In the Garden. Beautiful. I welcome you to please be seated now. And as you do so, we will turn to our scripture. Scripture coming from Genesis 45, verses 1 through 15. And you may remember that uh, this is a continuation of what we shared last Sunday. Actually, we're jumping a few chapters, but um, 
It is one that I've been looking forward to sharing with you throughout the week. Hear this word of God, Genesis 45, verses 1 through 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And it's kind of an interesting point here. At this moment, uh, Joseph hasn't been speaking in his native tongue. And so his brothers really couldn't understand what was going on. So he has all these individuals, uh, servants and what have you, leave. And, and, and he switches over to the language that his brothers would have, would have understood. And he, and he wept so loudly that he, the Egyptians heard it. And the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to the, my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and, your, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept on them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of, word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So last Sunday, uh, I, I left with you a turn of events where Joseph went from having it all to, to being a slave due to his brother's jealousy and resentment that consumed them. Joseph was sold and, and he was on his way to Egypt as a slave. In the time since, in these chapters that took place, both Joseph and his brothers are having to deal with all sorts of things. God was with Joseph and soon... Even as a slave, he became rather successful in the service of his master, Ponifar, who was an officer of Pharaoh. It was in his service that he found favor and began to have more and more responsibilities until Potiphar's wife tries to commit adultery with him. And when Joseph won't abide, he was, I guess he was a pretty good looking guy, but, but these, are, these, these, are, these things that were taking place with, with his wife, why Joseph won't abide, and when, when, when he won't, he turns and is, is falsely accused of attempting to violate her. And once again, he's stripped of all sorts of prestige and he's thrown into prison again or confinement. While in prison, he meets a cupbearer and a baker who have dreams. And Joseph ends up interpreting those dreams. And it went really well for the cupbearer, but not so much for the baker. Read up on it. It's an amazing account. But in the middle of those dream interpretations, Joseph asks for the cupbearer specifically to remember him because I think Joseph is just getting a little tired of being kind of hemmed in again. He's falsely accused. He knows that he was in the wrong, and yet he finds himself in this dungeon. He said, please, when you get out, speak a kind word to the Pharaoh on my behalf. Well, the cupbearer, he forgot for two years. Two years until he heard that the Pharaoh was having a dream that he needed to have interpreted. And then the light bulb went off and, and the cupbearer suddenly remembers Joseph. And before you know it, he's back in the, the interpreting a dreams business out of prison. And so he gains this great amount of power in Egypt as he prepares for seven years of famine that follow the seven years of prosperity. 
Well, the time goes on, and before you know it, the prosperity years have passed, and now everyone finds themselves two years into the famine. Joseph has Egypt. They are in a good place. They are doing fine. Joseph is doing fine. He's doing very well. And I, I can only imagine how he has been humbled. He even makes reference to the Pharaoh and before he gets into telling, interpreting the dreams, that this isn't about him. This is about God. I think that Joseph's experience of the highs and lows in life give him a clear, mature view of life and faith and how it is that God can work through the most unexpected circumstances. Thus, we turn for a moment to Joseph's brothers. Think of this. Since they last saw Joseph being carted off, they have had to face their father's grief, carry around with them this ongoing burden of guilt, and now to top it all off, there isn't any food. They, they are not having a good go of it. Jacob sends them to Egypt because that's where the food is. And that leads to a, a whole bunch of drama because the brothers do not know who Joseph is yet. And after a couple of setups by Joseph, I think he's kind of having some fun as a brother, where the brothers are falsely accused of stealing. Joseph finally gets to see his brother uh, Benjamin and, and the, 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 the chance to reveal himself takes place. Believe me, what I just gave you is a very, very encapsulated version of chapters 37 through 45. Please read 37 through 45. It is a good read. But it is in this, this moment of revelation of his identity to his brothers that we see how Joseph shares how God has been at work since the brothers plot to get rid of him. Because God has been working in such marvelous ways, the health and well-being of Israel will be assured and made to prosper. Food and fine, a fine place to graze their livestock will be supplied in Goshen. The people will have a future. And this is significant for them to know that they will have a future. Also, what is significant is that when the brothers finally absorb the reality of what they're experiencing, they experience reconciliation, forgiveness. And then at the very end of the text, we hear these words, and after that, his brothers talked with him. That's huge. They had relationship. Let me tell you, the brothers didn't see all that coming. They were stunned. They went from a dreadful fear of being accused and imprisoned, and perhaps even worse, to being assured that their well-being and that their family and that their father and the continuation of their people would take place in a way that would show prosperity. In the Wesley Study Bible, there is a comment that I thought very powerful. It asked the question, how can we see in retrospect that good outcomes were birthed from treachery or tragedy? The story of Joseph's astonishing reversal of fortunes teaches that all things can indeed work together for good for those who love God. That any given moment is not the last moment. That life is God's hands has forward movement and holds the possibility for restoration, if not resurrection, on uh, the other side of a desperate circumstance. Notice that this good outcome is accompanied by the forgiveness and restitution of family community. And that is a product of Joseph's own choices. In other words, Joseph is a forgiving brother, but he's also one that ensures that, that his family community is going to be in a good place. There's no resentment that comes with this. I absolutely love the account such as this because it points to the reality of a loving God that we often forget in the middle of sticky, uncertain, and miserable circumstances. I want us to have hope. Yep, we are in the middle of some trying times, kind of like being in the middle of that seven-year famine that is described in Genesis. But I have hope. I have hope because Zion UMC has this wonderful tradition of being faithful under all circumstances. God has honored such faithfulness with the opportunity for the church to be strong in areas like outreach missions. I have hope because this church has seriously spent time in prayer and looked to how it can be a strong body of faith through its ministries. And as a result, we have the Family Life Center, and it's a reality, and I just can't wait to see the ministry impact that will be developed in the months and the years ahead. Your commitment to make that building a reality speaks to the faithful commitment of offering the good news of Jesus Christ to the area, if not to places around the world. I am pumped by the fact that there are signs of life where new groups 
of, of um, small group studies have consistently been forming since March and will be carrying us into the fall and into the winter months. That is huge. I'm excited about your steadfast nature coming here or viewing online each week, faithfully coming as the body of Christ in circumstances that are less than, than ideal. And I am heartened by people who have talked to me personally and share their yearning for us as a church to only increase our sense of spirit and relationship with one another. Love people of God, if there is one thing that this is absolutely critical at this point in our history, it is committing ourselves to nurturing our relationships in this church and throughout this community. I firmly believe that this moment is the time that we can look back on and see how God brought us together with a resolve to be faithful, loving, and caring representatives of Christ and his love for us and the world in which we live. I understand there's a lot of strife. There's a lot of uneasiness. There's a lot of mental anguish and concern. I get that. But we believe in a God that is bigger than that and allows us to know joy in the midst of the storm. Focus in on that joy. Reflect that joy. You know, in, uh, in the movie 42, in the morning 42, the movie 42, Jackie Robinson was getting a lot of heat because he was a black baseball player. He was not welcomed, and the ugliness of racism was freely shown and hurled on him on a regular basis and in very, very extreme and hurtful ways. One day, he and his wife were walking down a street, and there was a white man who was fixing a streetlight or something on the, along the sidewalk. The man saw them pass. The man crossed the street, and he called out something to the effect, and forgive me because I'm paraphrasing, are you Robinson? And as Jackie acknowledged that he was, he saw the man approach him. He got in front of his wife to protect her. The man simply came up to him, shook his hand and said something to the effect, if you got the goods, you should get a fair shake. He then said, I'm pulling for you, Jackie. He bid Jackie and his wife a good day, and he went back to work. Jackie and his wife looked at each other in shock of the support that they had just received. They didn't see that coming. I think they were given hope. We are a Christian people. We are a resurrection people. We are an Easter people who celebrate the risen Christ. Christ is victorious over sin and death. Let's live with a heart full of joy and love for one another, regardless of circumstance. May our spirits begin to fill our frames and let our bones get busy doing God's work around us. Let us live our lives in such a way that when we leave a situation or a conversation, people that were around us can't help but look each, at each other just as Joseph's brothers looked at themselves and say, I didn't see that coming. Let us share an unexpected word of kindness, encouragement, or grace with one another. We can do this. Let us be faithful so that God can take all the hardship that is being faced and turn it into a God moment where we can't help but say with a smile on our faces, I didn't see that coming. Look for those God moments this week. Allow God to work through you so you can be one of those God moments for someone else this week. This is a place of life. Shall we rejoice in such a reality? We have had such a, 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 a shroud put over us since the middle of March. We don't have to live like that anymore. I'm over that. I am so excited as we look into this coming fall and into the winter with the ministries that God will provide for us. They're going to look different. Yep. But they're going to be vital ministries nonetheless. I'm excited to see how God is going to work through us and use us in ways that bring life to this community, to this church, to those that are well beyond us. And let me tell you right now, I'm just thinking of Pastor Pierre. Haiti is going through a tremendously hard time. Gangs are literally overrunning the country. It is horrible. It's very dark. It's very dangerous. We need to pray for them. We need to let Pastor Pierre know that we're praying for them. These are the kinds of things that I'm talking about. Sometimes we feel like there's no hope. Sometimes we feel like we just, we just have this downtrodden look. 
That is not the focus. That's not the syllable that we want to emphasize in our Christian walk. We want to be excited about who we are and the gift that God gives us in Christ and to live into that, to be passionate about that, to look for the possibilities that we have to help people witness, experience, know the love of God in Christ Jesus. And again, after that encounter, they can't help but say, I didn't see that coming. In other words, I didn't see the joy and the love. I wasn't expecting that. And now I feel refreshed. I hear a church bell. <laughs> One of the churches in, in Sarver, I guess it's time for me to stop preaching. <laughs> I want you to know that you are in my prayers, that I'm excited to be in ministry with you as we serve this church together, as we serve Christ together. Be filled with a joy. Be filled with the Spirit as we go from this place today. May God's blessings surround you all. Amen. May we stand for our final hymn. I'm so thrilled to see all who are here this morning. You are a blessing. You are a blessing who are joining us online. So glad you could join us. I, I, it's just great to have you here as well. I do want to invite you, if you're inclined to take one of those packets to be a part of the outreach ministries we're doing, everyone is able to do them. Um, I invite you to do so. They're up in just the, the very entrance of the church. May God's blessings surround you all. Be filled with a love and a spirit that is eternal in Christ. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.